am not joining chaos, you ass. Well, no, I never said anything about that. I have spent over 10,000 years of my life in his service. Indeed. Perhaps it is time to take orders from someone else? Not chaos. No, oh, no, not specifically. But I know someone who might fit the bill, shall we say. I'll... I'll humor you. Who do you speak of? Oh, only the second most powerful kind of sort of human in the galaxy. Me, of course! No. You're just doing this to spite him. I am not. Sherry sure, certainly has been incredibly aggressive, egotistical, and foul-smelling, throwing insults at me at every turn only to give me some half-arsed apology later on. But that is not the reason I'm asking you to serve me instead. What is your reason, then? To be quite honest, Father is in no state to run the Imperium. He's throwing foolish orders left and right without concern for consequences. His reckless behavior will bring mankind to extinction rather than salvation. And why would I take your word before his? So far, all of his orders have been perfectly logical in their... unique little ways. <laughs> oh, really? Well, if that truly is the case, how come you haven't deactivated Gilliman's life support yet? That is one of his highest demands, is it not? I have my reasons. Could it possibly be because you... Doubt his judgment? I do not see how that... Please do not try to defend him. I need you to realize that the more orders he sends out, the further the Imperium will fall. And only we can stop him. And how would you even go through with that? I can tell you. But only if you accept my offer. <sighs> you know, it is no mistake that you were elected as Captain General. You are a loyal subject, a capable leader, and a trustworthy comrade. Um, you have broken through to a being as despondent and audacious as my father. He did appreciate you, but the maddening agony of a million lashes and cuts from the turmoil that is his existence has warped his mind beyond proper function. Yes, he may have appreciated you, but you... You deserve better. Uh... Aha. You deserve to serve me. Or rather, you deserve a companionship. You and I, side by side, mending the weeping wounds of mankind before it succumbs to negligence. Yes, we shall come as angelic sages, saving the Imperium from its demise. And before this is over, if Father snaps out of his incessant lunacy, perhaps if he comes back to us in mortal form once more, oh, not only will he be thanking us, he will be bowing before us. Fine. I will help you, Magnus. You are more intelligent than you have ever been given credit for. This will certainly knock down Father's pride a few notch. I mean, uh, make the Imperium great again? Yes, yes. However, before we can begin, we need to sign a contract. A contract? Yes, indeed. Don't worry, it's not like you have to sign it with your blood or anything like that. All I require is your full name. Are you really sure about that? Why, yes, yes I am. I mean, really sure? Yes, tell me your full name. Well, alright then. Here goes. <laughs> Gordy Dog Sunshine Graham Corncob Stop! 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 <sighs> I told you to tell me your name, not a bunch of derogatory sobriquets. You told me to tell you my full name, and so I am. I presume you forgot the fact that us custodians are names as recognition for mighty deeds. Or perhaps you just assumed I'd lived the uneventful life of an armored housemaid. Well, uh... Nevertheless, I'm barely halfway through, so if you want me done today, you should probably allow me to continue. Uh, actually, let's do it like this instead. What are you called mostly around here? Um... I don't know, Lord General. Kitten! Alright, we'll go with that! Contract sign! Uh. I see. So, what?
what now? Now, dear companion, you are going on your first mission. <laughs> When is Magnus coming back with my precious Starlight Boy? They have been gone for several months now. It has only been a period spending a few hours since they left. If you were stuck on a spirit leeching murder throne every second of all time you would not be so fucking cocky and take time for granted like that. I am not male domestic fowl with a Y. I am Rogel Dorn. Were you always this teeth shatteringly obnoxious, or did you suffer some form of brain damage from being in that century on suit for thousands of years? Yes. Scratching your head in this suit is a dangerous task. Normally I just use Storm's teeth, but I lost it. It does make perfect sense, seeing as you are behaving like the constipated fusion of an oblivious sovereign and a snappy housewife. Father, are you familiar with the expression, you are what you eat? The fuck? Seeing as you're behaving like an ever-growing pile of screaming, psychic children. Wow, Rogel. Wait to bring down the fucking hammer. I do not own a hammer. Oh wait, no. There it is. Magnus, Yellow Jacket, anyone except Rogel, please come and save me from this nightmare of a conversation. Greetings, my glorious overlord. No, 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 no. Anyone except the strippers. I am not a stripper, so I can save you, father. Whatever did I do to deserve this fate? Sob. Now, companion, this is your moment. You know what to do. It is for the good of all the Imperium. Sorry, but you're all discharged. Yes! Good job, dear companion! Their foolish tirades about excrement and being really old will be no more! And now we will have full authority of the Adeptus Administratum, the Adeptus Arbites, the Astra Militarum, the Adeptus Mechanicus, and the Ecclesia! Wait a moment. Where's Pope Shaft Hat the 23rd? Oh my holy... <clears throat> I mean... Oh, by my manly manperer! What have you done, Lord General? Ha ha ha! Yes, by doing this, we have gotten one step closer to saving the Imperium from the incompetent- Emperor is bulging by such a fucking demon! Yes, I have been here this entire time. You will not get away with this! I will inform the Emperor! And when I do, you will face the ultimate judgment by a billion fiery hot pots and- No! Is anybody out there? Oh, my ribcage! My liver! And my lasagna are all broken! Huh? Uh, either it's the pills I took this morning, or there is all manner of ruckus going on outside of this closet. And I don't like it. Remind me of my time as a trooper, when I was shouting to lockers and sessions about my squad mates. I should spend more time in lockers than I did with five fucking battles. My nipples are pill dispensers. Everyone! I can see the light! Oh. Wait a moment. If they were in there, who or what are these corpses sitting at the table? <gasps> Xenos! Those are lacrimals. They have the ability to shapeshift, changing their appearance at will. Wow, what timing? In that case, I have thoroughly misjudged you. I am sorry for my previous brash pronouncement. I must learn to be more open-minded and not make hasty conclusions, as the Emperor intends. I thank you. You are true heroes of the Imperium. Yes, thanks to you, we can now make up more dumb rules and shit ourselves undisturbed once again! Fuck you, hooray! Actually, uh, could you not do that? Uh, what? Um, uh, what are we supposed to do? Well, could you, like, make rules that benefit the Imperium and its people instead? Huh. I've never really thought of it that way before. Wait! So, things can benefit 
other people? I'm confused. My guardsmen could actually use some benefits now and again, I suppose. They're all pretty deserving of it. A dying drone will fight me with Xeno invaders and all that. I am totally going to Mars after this to serve oil margaritas. <laughs> Come, companion. You've made them start trying to comprehend things. Let us get out of the blast radius where they still haven't exploded into a shower of cerebrum and fecal matter. Oh, sure. Uh, let us go. I, I, I liked it better in the closet. My glorious overlord, I just want to say that I've awaited this day for millennia. The day on which I get to hold the most prestigious honor of being your caretaker. I am going to make it like a hooker and say let us get this over with as quickly as possible because you are creepy and I need to wallow in self-pity some more. Well, before we go through with the bathing, the grooming, the manicure, and the special skeleton massage, please allow me to ask, what do you and little kitten usually do to pass the time? After all... Anything he can do, I can do better! And now, I am able to prove it. We usually play a game of get the fuck out unless you have clothes on. You must be terrible at that game, father. Shut the fuck up, Rogel. I am but an empty cogitator, into which you can insert your data, my glorious overlord. My wish is your desire. I can fulfill whatever order Kitten would have. So please, give me a chance! Fucking fine. Oh, you are fine indeed. What we usually do is that I bring up a topic concerning the Imperium, or the galaxy at large, and then Sun Cat tells me about its so my knowledge of the current state of affairs in the 41st millennium expands further, in preparation for my return. Oh, your return? I completely understand. So what is it you would like to know about, my glorious overlord? Tell me about the Space Wolves. Who the fuck are Space Wolves? Oh, yes, yes, the Space Wolves, of course. Why, they are a legion of Astartes following the Primarch known as Lemon Russ, of course. Lemon Russ, Le Lemon, Lemon Russ. Yes, of course, you fucking idiot. Tell me what they are up to in this current time period. For instance, where is Lemon Russ? Uh, I assume he is with his Space Wolves doing things that Space Wolves do. Mm, strike one. Has their chapter culture radically changed? I am fairly certain they still like wolves. Mm, strike two. Have their physiology been altered in any way, so they look like pugs or some shit nowadays? Well, they have always been very brutish and unshaven, but that could also be points in their favor, depending on the mood. Strike three. Did they follow Gilliman's decree about splitting the Legion into chapters? I'm sorry, what's a decree? That's the last strike and you are fucking out. For the sake of all fucks in the space-time continuum, can you tell me anything useful? The Space Wolves are Space Marines. He's incredibly unknowledgeable, Father. Thanks, Rogel. I noticed that. But please, my glorious Overlord, I can still do this! I thought you said you could do better than my regular companion, but thus far, you have been nothing more than an utter disappointment. D disappointment Yes. D I I I S A A A P P O O I N T M E A E E E N T. I I'm sorry. I just... there's just something gone awry with my brain right now. Right now is not how you say the word constantly. I promise I can do better. Just let me go outside for a quick second. Well, that was absolute garbage. Instead of saving the Imperium, we accidentally set it back by another millennia or so. I'm not sure. I think I may have actually gotten through to them. Shut your bleach blonde mouth, companion! We failed and that is that. But do not fret, for my erudite mind has already hatched another brilliant plan that will surely help us in our quest to redeem mankind. Ironically, the only reason I came up with this plan in the first place is because Father spoke perhaps a bit too much about it in private conversation. Oh. So... what is it? We are going to Nocturne to borrow one of Vulcan's most powerful artifacts. The Engine of Woes. The Engine of Woes? I've only heard about it in Legends, but its powers are always shrouded in mystery. 
What powers does it possess? Tell me everything you know of the sp sp space wolves. Within ten minutes, or I will slowly peel your armor off. Please no no again! Space wolves! I have returned, my glorious overlord. And now I am ready to fulfill this lust for knowledge about the Volk of Fenrika that you have been coveting. Fine. This is your last chance. Tell me the tale of the Space Wolves, Macabre Man Gubayan. First off, your brutalicious wolves and Lemon Russ Lemon Lemon Fuck! Lemon Russ disappeared approximately two centuries after your tragic entombment into the Golden Throne. Many say that he went on a journey straight into the Eye of Terror and was never seen again. His stubborn nature seemed to be the end of him then. For what purpose would one ever 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 go into Supreme Death Hell to do anything? Unless you are an ultramarine or something. He's a man's man. Hard to handle. Knows what he wants and goes roughly to get it. In this case, there are several theories about just what made him desire to venture into that gigantic galactic axe wound. Is one of them that he found a meaty bone and wanted a perfect place to put it? Oh, I'm sure he had all the meaty bones he wanted ready and available back home on Fenris. Stop that. No, but the first theory is that he went into the Eye of Terror to find and once and for all defeat the one known as Magnus the Red. From a quite reliable source, I can say that, and I quote, The furry fuck did not succeed! I will have to have a little chin wagging with Magni magic later it seems, but do tell. What were the other theories? Theory two is that Lehman Russ wanted to find his long lost brother, Lionel Johnson, Primarch of the Dark Angels. Lehman Russ's chances of finding the lion in the war are 0.000%. Do you know of Lion's location then? It seems like said chin wagging will involve you as well, little rogally don don. I fail to see how wagging one's chin will help in any Please way. Please do carry on with your double on thunder ridden dialogue, creepster. Do you want me to continue? Yes, of course, my glorious overlord. The third theory, one that dearly warms the cockles of my heart, is that he made his journey into the Eye of Terror to seek out the mythical tree of life. It is a tree of immense power and girth. Said to hold fruits that could heal you of all the injuries and ailments you have suffered since your ascension, allowing you to once more return. Does he really think eating some fucking banana will make me all better again? I personally think it is a lemon. A lemon is a mighty fruit. My favorite. I like to think it's a kumquat. Stop radiating uncomfortableness, you eldritch abomination, and continue speaking. Oh, yes, of course. The chapter and its culture is very... Wolfy, one would say. Ever since Lehman Russ yes, was raised by wolves as an infant, it has remained a persistent theme within the chapter. When an initiate of the Space Wolves has gone through their basic training, not only are they stuck in power armor immediately as to join the pack, but they must drink from the cup of Wolfen as a part of an initiation ritual. If they are unworthy of ascending into the ranks of the Space Wolves, the liquids that fill the cup will instead turn the initiates into literal Space Wolves. As in, due to a gene seed defect, they will turn into man-wolf hybrids called Wolfen. It is incredibly convenient for their image that they did not turn into fucking shrimpmen or something instead. Also, what a beautiful fucking way to waste away initiates for a PR stunt. It should be noted that Wolf King Russ all but entirely refused the Codex Astartes, and thus the Space Wolves are not your normal chapter, but bloated to the brim with hefty, hairy wolf enthusiasts. The current Wolf Lord of the Space Wolves is Logan Grimnar, also known as the Old Wolf. He rules from the Hall of the Great Wolf together with his Wolf Lords such as Herald Death Wolf, Eagle Iron Wolf, and Bajoran Storm Wolf. Under the command are troops such as the Wolf Guard, the Wolf Scouts, and the Mystical Wolf Priests, ready to fly the Storm Wolves and ride the Thunder Wolves straight into battle with their bladed wolf claws, the wolf standard raised high, and the wolf amulets active, all wolf can battle and bridle with intense CQC fury, and wolf-like musk in preparation for the coming wolf time. All I got out of that was wolf 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 and wolf. The space wolves are incredibly uninspired. I could not have put it more bluntly and unembellished myself. I assume they cannot help it. Their animalistic simplicity must limit their creativity. But one should not be fooled, for the wolves of Fenris are smarter than they seem. 
They act like drunkards and braggarts as a layer of woven incompetence to cover up their ferocious prowess for when their foe least expect it. Just like I'm doing with my loincloth. Well, that is the best bullshit excuse for drinking shameful amounts of Astartes pattern alcohol I have ever heard. The battle damage suffered by an Imperial Armada in the span of a year does not appear that serious when compared to the suffering of a Space Wolf liver. What they also have is an otherworldly connection to their home planet like none other. Apparently they can sense the nature surrounding them, becoming as one with it. The planet even goes as far as to grant some of its inhabitants special powers, making them able to channel psychic energies from animalistic spirits dwelling on Fenris. The Space Wolves are quickly uncovered to be Shitmasters Supreme because those are still not friendly wolf spirits of Fenris like they have been insisting for ten millennia. Those are fucking demons. Oh goodness, demons! I remember battling those back in the day, specifically the horrid spawns of Slanesh. They are nasty, debased, and entirely inappropriate. Ugh. I am not even going to humor that. You are way too easy of a target. So many people use the word easy when describing me. And I'm not even sure what that is supposed to mean. You can't stop holding up that make fun of me sign now, and finish this. Naturally. The final thing that should be noted about the Space Wolves is their most remarkable feature. They seem to have evolved for the lack of a better word. In the past, they were not but wild savages and ruthless executioners. But now they serve as a wolfalicious beacon of hope for the small and significant people of the Imperium. They have stood against many adversaries when injustice has reared its ugly head, saving countless human lives as a result, even when whom they fought threatened not only their existence, but their very loyalty to the Imperium. So my totally original final thesis would be, that the Wolves are what the Imperium needs them to be at any given time. Be it cold-blooded murderers, or noble heroes. Perhaps we should rename them the Space Corgis to better represent their undying determination, when all is stacked against them. Corgis are funny. They have small legs. Very well then. I presume we have wolfed it up enough. Yes, my glorious overlord. Alright, here is my mental list of things that desperately requires fixing. Number one. Make haste equal to the Council of Nikia for the purpose of banning interaction with demons role-playing as friendly woodland critters. Number two, have them stop stuffing their defective gene seed into acolytes. If there even is a slight chance of them turning free and fucking off, it is a massive waste of precious gene seed, which is both incredibly important for the survival of an Astartes legion and phenomenally limited in supply. Number three, have Logan Greenar deliver presents to all children of the Imperium on Sanganila. And lastly, number four. Exchange all named instances of Wolf with Corky. Wolf priests could be called Korgomancers. Pure excellence. Other than that, I have to say, you have admittedly been evaded informing me about the Wolf's BDSM banana number one. You definitely had my doubts, but now, thanks to you, I now have many more Wolves in my Wolves. Uh, oh, th thank you, my glorious overlord. I am honored beyond belief. I will make sure to serve you even more fervently, and gain more of your favor from this moment on. For that is my eternal duty, as one of your custodians. Sure, I suppose. Just do not torture Goldie Guy so harshly next time. So now, it is time for your sponge bath. <laughs> Wait just a moment. Oh, what is it you wish of me? Before you nothing short of molest me, I have a mission for you. I require you to send out a message to the Ultramarines. I have a new mission for them. My, my, my. What is this mission you wish to be graciously provided to the Blueberries? This may just be their toughest challenge yet, so I hope for their sake that their ridiculous galactical cheat powers have not been depleted as of yet. Tell them to enter the webway and outdance the best Harlequin dancers in the galaxy. I am great at cliffhangers. No. So, they have finally arrived. It is time for me to leave this planet to its ostentatious destiny. And at long last, 
I get to eat something that isn't fucking sand. Oh, I am so mysterious. <coughs> Mysteriously exhilarated. <laughs> Azrael, why did you kill those battle brothers? I did not kill them. You told Asmodai to make them repent. You know that to his ears, make them repent is the same as saying, murder them violently. Yes, Asmodai is a fucking asshole who cannot make anyone repent. Did someone just say murder anyone violently? But they could have turned at any moment with that kind of knowledge. But they were initiated in the inner circle last week. We were just going to inform them about our super shameful history so they could fill out their cloaks properly. Hold your tongue for one bleeding moment, Belial. I can't hold my tongue. It'll get all covered in dust. Shut it! The Mechanicus are coming right this way. You are Stardis, Dark Angels. What brings you to this planet? That is none of your business, Drillman. I demand that you tell me what you are doing upon this planet immediately. Delphine Glass does not answer to rude flesh bags. Well, maybe the answer is to massive mate smashes across his vacuum cleaner on the face, huh? He does not. You better be quick. Asmodai is incredibly disobedient and very twitchy with his mace hand. He can't even drink recaf without causing <laughs> terrible accidents. Your disrespectful meetings. Leave immediately. This planet is declared sacred and property of the Omnissiah. Look, I'm sorry. My brothers are a bit jumpy. See, we were kind of led to this planet in order to find, uh, something or someone. And we really need to know what you Mechanicum chaps are up to in order to further our investigation. Could you please tell? Pretty please? You speak in a tongue pleasant for being articulated by beefy bits. So I don't think God should tell you. We are here because we have received a report of this planet containing ancient technology. What we have found surpassed anything we could have ever hoped for. So now, we are here to safe keep the planet and restore the atavistic structures we have discovered upon it. It is one of the greatest findings in the Mechanicus history. I'm sorry, but I do not believe a word of this! You are working with the full... I, I mean, you have a hidden agenda! Only filthy traitors have hidden agendas, and, and secret circles and ominous hoods like you creeps do! I will activate my spam filter if you do not see. No! No! As Supreme Grand Master of the Dark Angels, I demand that I may speak to your leader! The Fabricator General is currently located on Mars for once, serving oil margaritas. If you wish to speak to him, you have to travel there. Fine! We shall do just that. But we will return, mark my words. You are up to something, and I'm going to figure out exactly what. Come! We are going to Mars, as fast as astronomically possible. We shall leave the rock and the rest of the fleet here to watch over this planet from orbit. No one shall enter or leave without being blasted into oblivion! I will hit that walking jackhammer in the face when we get back! Uh, Azriel, I'm gonna get motion sick again. Shut your face, Belial! So, have you guys got ships or something? I'm starving. Sure, brother. You can find some inside the minibar in the pole dance quarter. Oh, marvelous. <laughs>